I would like to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in to our online Sunday service. Please feel free to share with us about your location. My name is Milson Ndovu, a pastor in the Brethren in Christ Church, and I'm excited to talk to you today about the transformative love of God. The word transformative means in Isindebele or in Zulu, that which causes a remarkable change in someone. So the love of God causes a change, a remarkable change when you accept that love of God. Are you aware, my brother, my sister, are you aware that the love of God or just the love in general can make somebody completely change, change in character, change in appearance. Love makes wonders. I remember myself when I fell in love with uh, uh, my fiancé who happens to be my, my married wife now. A number of things changed in my life. So similarly, when you are in love with the divine, with God himself, a lot will change in your life. Your character will change in your life. The love that I'm talking about today is the love that can make somebody better, that can somebody happy, that can make somebody healed, and that can make you feel complete, not only feel complete, but be complete. As we approach the end of the year, I would like to say to you compliments of the new season. This is the season of love, and I would want to say to you, it is the season of generosity. It is the season that you need to accept the love of God and to share this love of God with others. I'm sharing about the love of God within the context of our theme for the year, 2020. Our theme for the year 2020 has been God loves us. And God's love makes us love others. And when we love others, it includes loving your family, it includes loving peace, loving holiness, loving, praising God. Today, we are talking about the restorative power of God's love. Let's open the Bible. We shall read John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, God Almighty, you are love. You act. You speak. You invite. And you draw us to you. Your love is creative, God. We pray that this very creative love creates newness within us. We pray that this creative love that is so powerful, God Almighty, will transform us because your love is a transforming love. We pray that you speak to us this Sunday morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as you watch me, for God so loved, for God so loved, 
That's what the Bible says. I'm sure most of us have noticed that there is an awful lot of fear in the world today. Many people feel broken and certainly in my line of work, I see people day in, day out who are emotionally compromised and feeling without hope. I've seen that those that accept God is transforming love can be very, uh, I mean, can be transformed and changed because this transformative love of God is, is, is helpful, rebuilds people and makes us health again. For God so loved. Accepting God is transformative love is a step that is much larger process for a healthy life, a viable life, and it makes us become human. Because the transformative love of God changes all that is sinful with us or in us. All our brokenness is mended and restored by the transformative love of God. For God so loved the world. All things and all people can never ever satisfy you, can never ever be with you all the way of your life, even after death. But the love of God, it's a life, I mean a lifelong commitment to you. I want to say to you, you might have a parent, children, counselors, mentors, therapists, friends, relatives, all these people uh, around us, they enter into our lives and they exit, exit our lives. But I want to tell you that those that have come into your life and those whose life you have entered, one time you will exit and one time they will exit from your life. So every one of us is like a conduit. It is a conduit not for change for life, but it can be a conduit for a, a, a change, um, a short-lived change. I say love is transformative. When you got into love or when you were loved, honestly, you were changed. But there is a greater love than the love of your relatives, the love of your friends, the love of your lover, the love of God. For God so loved, for God so loved the world. The love of God changes our emotions, changes our character, changes our lives. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3 and 1 says, See what great love the Father has loved, lavished on us. See, open your eyes, look, watch. See the love of God. The love of God has been lavished, has been poured, has been spread on us. And what does this love of God say? This love make us be called the children of God. And that's who we are. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. How great is this love of God? 
How great is this love of God? It is such great that we are invited to behold it, to see it, to pay attention to it. This love of God is marvelous. Check it out for yourself. It is so immeasurable, this love of God. This love of God draws us to God. This love of God is eternally. I want to liken this love of God like if you are drawing this love of God, if you are connected to this love of God, if you are uh, fitting in, in this love of God, it is like drawing water from the sea using a cup. You can't exhaust it. You can't finish it. So, greater is that love of God. The love of God is so absolute and it is a commitment of God to your life and to our lives. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world, behold how great the love of God is that he has lavished, that he has bestowed, that he has put on us the great love of God. How did God show his love? That God created you and I. He created you in God's image. He created me in God's image. He created us human beings in his image. That's a demonstration of God's love. God created us in his likeness to resemble him. Why? Because he loved us. God breathed, breathed into us the breath of life. Why? Because God so loved us. God's love never fails. God's love never runs out. God's love never gives up. God's love is eternal. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. God showed his love by giving us Christ. We are approaching Christmas. This is a season where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. God becoming man, taking the form of a man. Theologians call it incarnation. God becoming a man. This is love. God showing up, intervening, and making himself available to us. This is love. And God walking all, uh, I mean, walking among us to the extent of dying at the cross of Calvary. That's God's love. God taking up all the penalty for sin. That's God's love. See how great the Father's love has been lavished on us. For God so loved. This is very clear that God started this. It is not your initiative to be loved by God. It is God's initiative. God started it. God is the source of love himself. For God so loved. Love existed before anything existed. Love existed from eternity and it will ex exist to eternity. For God so loved, so loved. God's love will never run out in a minute. So put your faith in God's love. Oh, too many people often do not feel loved either by themselves or by others. 
Without love, there is a, you feel uh, uh, you have a, a black hole in, in your soul. Without love, there is a gap in your life. And people tend to uh, fill this gap by many things. They try food, they try possessions, they try drugs, they try alcohol. They try uh, 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 loving, they try promiscuity, but I tell you, this gap can never ever be filled by anything else except love. Do you feel loved? Do you discern God is love? And the love that can satisfy you, that can satisfy this down deep hole within you, is the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave. Who did he give? He gave Jesus Christ as a gift. We are approaching Christmas. Some of us will receive gifts, and yet some are not going to receive any gift. But I tell you, you can receive Christ as a gift from God. It is a, he is a wonderful gift. He is a gift to you. He is a gift to the world. Nothing can separate us from that love of God. There is an English song which I love and I like so much. It says, even if I run away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have never, I mean, you have new messages for me every day. Your love never fails. The song goes on to, stay, to say, you stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. And my pain can there be, I mean, my pain can be uh, so excruciating, so painful in me. But joy comes in the morning. Why? Because your love never fails. When oceans rages, I don't have to be afraid because I know you love me. Your love, your love never fades. The wind is strong and the waters deep. I'm not alone in these open seas because your love never fades. The chasm is too far wide. I never thought I will reach the other side, but I will reach because your love never fails. God so loved the world. Great is the love of God who has loved us. We love God because he loved us. God's love for us, to us, doesn't depend on us doesn't depend on anybody, it depends on who God is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Christmas reminds us of the gift of God, of the son of God, who came from heaven, died at the cross because he loved you, he loved me. Why? So that we may not perish. There is future with hope. So that we may not perish. The word will points us to the future. So there is a future with hope. A future with no perishing. God doesn't want you to perish. God doesn't want his creation to perish. Why? Because God loved us. God's love reveals that God will 
will protect you from perishing. God's will for you on death and the afterlife is revealed from this scripture. God's love help us live a more satisfying and a resourceful life. God's love gives us courage and healing through his divine grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. This is divine grace. This is divine favor. God's transformative love is a healing love. It is a healing love from aloneness, from emotional pain, from distress. God is transformative love. Is a love that connects us with life in a world of sickness, in a world of pain, and in a world of sorrow. God says, I've so loved the world and I've given my only son that whosoever believes in me will not perish but have everlasting life. So, God's love says to us, you don't need to be anxious about your future. Your future is entirely in the hands of God. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 16, and First Thessalonians 4, verse 13 and 18, it tells us that the, if, the issues of life and death are in God's hands. At times we think and concerns, concern ourselves about death and the death of the loved one. But I will say to you, God's love transforms our thoughts, changes our thoughts, affects our feelings, and influences our behavior as far as the afterlife is concerned. As a minister of the gospel, yes, I do feel sorry that your husband, your wife, your parent, your mother, your relatives, your child, your child, your brother, your sister may have passed on leaving you lonely. Death has censored your intimate relationship causing a down deep wound. But that down deep wound can be healed by God's love. The Bible reveals that God's love re protects us from perishing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. So God's love protects us from perishing. God's love transforms, changes, turns death into gain. Philippians 1, 20, 21, Paul says, for me, death is gain. In Christ, we believe that when we die, we don't perish. In Christ, when we die, we encounter Christ in heaven where we possess a beautiful vision where we see God, where we see a beautiful vision of God, Christ, and those that have gone before us to be with the Lord. When death occurs, it is like Christ has come into your life. Death is a great way to victory. It is a gateway to victory. Psalm 73, 24 says, Thou do guide me with thy counsel, and afterward thou will receive me to glory. God's love says to us, Do not perish. 
If you accept my love as God, you shall not perish, but you shall live eternal, eternally with God. You shall be received in glory with God. Think about Stephen in the Bible. When he died, did he perish? No. He says he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and said, I see the glory of God. I see the heavens open. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Acts chapter 5, 5. Jesus said to the thief at the cross of Calvary, I mean at the cross, when Jesus was at the cross, he said to the thief, today you shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. This is an affirmation that indeed God so loved us, so loved the world, that whosoever believes in Christ, believes in him, will not perish, but will have eternal life. There is power in believing in Christ because the restorative love of God protects us from perishing. It gives us peace. If you accept God's love, you receive the peace of God. If your relatives, your friends, your husband, your wife, your child, your neighbor, anybody accepts the love of God, they shall not perish, but they shall have everlasting life. Why? Because God is love. God is love. And love is the source that we can be able to love others. Put your faith in Christ. Put your confidence in Christ and you shall not perish but you shall live and you shall live forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 God wants everybody to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. To come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Because there is future with hope. Why? Because God loved me, loved you. There are many texts that reveal that God is love for the world will ensure that when you accept him, when you accept it, you are saved. I know there are some who in this life claim that through God's love, everyone will be saved. But I want to submit to you that Mark 16 verse 16 says, Go ye and preach the good news, the gospel, that whosoever believes shall be saved, but whosoever does not believe will be perished. I mean will perish. So we must repent to avoid perishing in hell. According to the story of Lazarus and the rich man, you might see yourself if you follow the trend of the rich man tormenting in hell while those that follow the trend of those that believe in Christ may see themselves being consoled, being comforted in heaven. My brothers and sisters, 
Believe you me. God has set a pathway that after death we may not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save it. The only savior for this for the world, the only savior for your life is Christ Jesus. Is Christ Jesus. It is only love and the restorative love of God that can transform you, that can change you, that can change your character, that can change the way you love, the way you live, the way you walk, the way you die, and your afterlife. It is the love, the restorative love of God that transforms, that changes your destiny, that can change your past. The love of God says, I will blot out all your sins. I will wash them away. I will remove them as the east is far from the west. So, your sins will be separated from you. Why? Because of love. The restorative love, transformative love of God, which restores and brings dignity in our lives, which makes us human again, which makes us uh, become the likeness of God, which transforms our image into the image of God. That's the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Here is the love of God. Would you say yes to this love of God? He is inviting you. The greatest Christmas you can ever receive in your life is to receive Jesus Christ is to receive the love of God. That love of God is a healing love. It's a life transforming love. It is a love that fills the gap of loneliness, the gap which other people fill with alcohol, fill with drugs, fill with uh, friends, fill with parties, fill uh, with sin, fill with all kinds of Things. I tell you, there is no person, no therapist, no counselor, no preacher, no nobody, 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 I tell you, who can fill that gap inside you, that hollow inside you. Only the love of God, that uh, God so bestowed upon us. When you receive that love of God, it's like you're opening a tap which uh, I mean is connected uh, to a river somewhere or a, a dam somewhere or to a, a, a source of, 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 of or a reservoir of water uh, somewhere and when you open that tap you are connected and you receive uh, 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 that water you receive that love and you are transformed for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you receive God's love, you'll be able to love. You'll be able to love. And you'll be able to know how to receive love from others. Because we learn to receive love by receiving love. We learn to love others by loving. The only way to love is to be loved. And the only way to be loved is to accept the love of God. I invite you today to the love of God. For God so loved us that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in this son will not perish but they have everlasting life. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that God, you transform 
our lives and our hearts through your transformative love. Make us new again. Make us that which you intended us to be. Change and transform the way we live, our character, our being, so that we resemble that which God intended us to be. Help us to accept your love as we approach the Christmas season, Lord. May we sense the love of God. May we celebrate this love. May we partake of this love. May we experience this love so that God Almighty, you receive the glory and the honor and the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. And I'm sure you can be free to support the ministry of God, the work of God. You can partner with God. You can partner with God through your gifts, through your offering, through your tithes, your through donations. We have got numbers on the screen right there on this platform. Please feel free to partner with God and partner with us as we minister the life-transforming Word of God. God bless you. Thank you.